I said earlier, lunch today was prepared by the Nutritional Service staff at Ohio County Healthcare. Please help me in uh, thanking them for the meal today. Our sponsor and speaker for today is Ohio County Healthcare as well. Before we start um, with our speaker, I want to recognize Judge Executive David Johnston for being here today. Anything you'd like to say, Judge? Just glad to be here. I believe that's the only one we have here. All right, next I'll ask Shannon to come up and introduce our speaker for today. She's so quiet, no one knows of Cece Robinson, but she's our guest speaker. Um, Cece is the manager of community medical staff and volunteer services with Ohio County Healthcare. She's been there for 15 years. She represents Ohio County Healthcare. She is the chair of the Ohio County Health Coalition and a member of the Green River Regional Health Council. She is the chair of the 2018 Ohio County United Way campaign. She's a board member of the Owensboro Community and Technical College and one of the founding members of Ohio County Economic Development Alliance and former Chamber of Commerce board director. <coughs> Cece. Ow. Thank you all, all so much and thank you, Jordan. I have to give one more round of applause for our incredible nutritional staff. Anita Joyner, Susan Shepard, I don't think anyone in this room can ever have any, um, any jokes about hospital food when they're around, can they, Anita? <laughs> but not only do they provide us with great meals for our patients and for our employees, they also work very hard to improve the health of Ohio County with some good nutritional choices. So we appreciate it. One more round for them. Um, Shannon was kind enough, as she always is, to, to list off the many various community activities that Ohio County Healthcare gets to be involved in. But that would only be, that was some of my job. And I, I think that the one job bullet point I did not put on there, Shannon, was all other duties as assigned by the CEO. <laughs> and that, I think, makes up 99.9% .9 of my job with Ohio County Healthcare. Um, Blaine Piper is our CEO. He absolutely loves to come to Chamber of Commerce and present the growth and the happenings of Ohio County Healthcare, but he was pulled away on a, another a meeting today. So I got the honor of, of working with you all today and fellowshipping as we talk about healthcare and its economic impact. So that said, we look a little different today, don't we? How many in the room are used to the normal Ohio County Hospital Burgundy? Yeah. And this is going to be very interactive. You know me, I, I, like, I like to have conversations, so I may call on you in the audience, you never know. Um, let's see if I can make our slides work up here. This is our new visual identity. We wanted to work on a name and an identity that better represented our healthcare system as a whole. We opened our doors as a hospital in 1956, and actually September 3rd, 1956. And at that point, we were a traditional hospital. We provided inpatient services, we provided diagnostic services. I'm not even sure what diagnostic services they had in 1956. Um, we had laboratory. Um, our physicians in the room will find this interesting. In 1956, and for about 10 to 15 years after that, our emergency room services, they called the doc in. Well, we now, of course, staff our emergency room as our safety net for our community 24-7. Back then, if somebody came to the emergency room, they picked up the phone and called, and then the doc came in from out of town, or from his home, usually a family medicine doctor at that point. So we've changed. We've grown. We've evolved. We have done everything we can to um, to um, 
make sure we can provide the best access to care in this community. So we needed an identity that also reflected that. What do y'all think? You like it? Okay, good. Now, you may hear me slip up. I might say, Ohio County Hospital. It's been with me a long time. But Ohio County Hospital really is the same as Ohio County Healthcare. The two consistency in that is OCH. We started as Ohio County Hospital. Present day, we are Ohio County Healthcare. And um, the biggest thing you need to remember about that is we're still locally owned. We're still community focused. We just have a fresh look that unifies our organization. And that's one big thing I need our chamber members to help me with. In this current culture, where healthcare systems are being bought out and they merge and they take on um, ownership by larger facilities, Ohio County Healthcare is standing strong. And one of my next slides is going to be from our, about our governing board. Our governing board of directors feels strongly, passionately, that healthcare decisions for Ohio County and the patients we serve, be they from Orangeboro, be they from Davis or from um, Morgantown, Litchfield, whatever patients we serve, those decisions need to be made by local people and our choices of how the money that we generate from our hospital needs to be made on a local level. So we have not been bought out. We are Ohio County Healthcare. We are the same organization we were. We just have a new look and a new name. So and I need you to help the community understand that. So I've already heard several times, oh, they've gotten bought out. But so y'all help us clarify that, that we are still who we always have been, just growing. So today, we're gonna talk about our new vision and identity, which we've already kind of hit upon. We're gonna focus on access to care. Access to care is our number one <laughs> priority. And when we say access to care, that means taking care of patients. Access to care means taking care of patients, expanding services so they can be taken care of in their home community. They don't have to travel. Access to care also means though, if we can't take care of you here, that we've got strong affiliations <laughs> with other healthcare institutes that can help us to take care of your needs. Um, you may see on the flyer in front of you, you'll see some clinics that we're affiliated with. Um, and um, I think there's one there for Grace Gilbert. And that's where Dr. Emmy Abakaway, many of y'all may remember our beloved Dr. Emmy. He comes over from Bowling Green and provides neurology services for us. We affiliate with Dr. Maheshwari and Dr. Prajapati and they come over from Owensboro and they provide oncology services. We affiliate at a hospital with Jessica Estes and her incredible group of mental health care providers of Estes Behavioral Health. These are affiliations. We're not owned by these entities. We affiliate with them so that they can help us expand our care. Um, you also may hear us talk about Norton's Healthcare. We as a hospital institute made a decision about a year and a half ago to affiliate with Norton's Healthcare not be owned by them, just affiliate. And they help us provide care to our community. If you could come to the ER, and it may be a trauma level that we need to get you to a, a larger facility. They help us on our inpatient through telemedicine services to um, provide subspecialty services that we may not have on our medical staff. Our goal at all times in access to care is to make sure that you can receive care in the community that is top quality. Um, while we are 100% focused on our patients, we also take very seriously our role to the community to be economic engines. We have to be part of the economic impact of growing Ohio County. So we're gonna talk a little bit about our services, but then I'm gonna, at the end of our um, presentation, I'm gonna tie it into how, that's, how that drives our economy. What does it mean when we recruit a physician to Ohio County? I'm gonna start first with our governing board. Today we have with us Ms. Carla Wallace, and throughout my, throughout my presentation I'm gonna introduce people. So we have Ms. Carla Wallace, Carla. She's been on our governing board for how long, Carla? About five years. Five years. Carla is a healthcare professional, she is a nurse, and prior to, um, she just recently retired from the Ohio County School System where she was educating and preparing future healthcare workers. Um, Carla, um, in her retirement, we've kept her very busy. Not only is she our, our member, our governing board trustee, but Carla also helps us with our volunteer service, excuse me, our volunteer services through our auxiliary. 
Can everybody hear me okay? I need to move my mic. Good. Sitting beside Carla Wallace is Miss Nana Galloway. Nana is one of our faithful Ohio County Hospital Auxiliary Volunteers, and she also is a former Ohio County Healthcare employee. Um, Nina serves in our executive council for our, our volunteer services, and while I may um, be the spokesperson for Ohio County Healthcare, our auxiliary members, they're the heart of our hospital. They get it done on a daily basis for our patients and our employees. We so appreciate them. Um, our governing board, everything we're going to talk about from this point on, our governing board are the stewards of. They meet on a monthly basis. They're paid only with a free meal, undying gratitude, and um, a, a lot of hard work to, to govern and make sure that we can um, provide great health care. Um, they represent several different communities throughout Ohio County. Um, we like to make sure that um, different corners of our community are represented. We have um, health care professionals, we have business people, we have health care, um, we have, um, pardon me, I apologize, we have teachers. I could not think, Scott Lewis, what your profession was. The educational system. It seems we like have, a lot of people have forgotten how they <laughs> I know, buddy. And so it's well represented to make sure that they can make wise decisions upon what we do for Ohio County. When we were looking at changing our, our name, I guess it's not a light thing. We really take a lot of pride in who we are and what we've grown into over these last several decades. We wanted to look at something that represented what we stand for. And uh, I'm gonna do a quiz, and if anybody in here has on a gray shirt, they better be able to answer this. What do you see that stands out in this logo? What word stands out to you? Thank you, Jamie Evans, Director of Rehab Services. <laughs> care. At the heart of what we do is we care. We care about our patients, we care about our employees, we care about this community, and we care about Ohio County. We wanted that to be the mainstay of what we do. Now the icon you see, the four squares, those represent the cornerstones of our healthcare system. Um, we start with Ohio County Family Care, um, we um, employed our first, well, Dr. Emmy was actually our first physician we employed, but we began recruiting from primary care about a decade ago, and we established Ohio County Family Care and had the little four square blocks that kind of stood alone. Um, we quickly were able to then move into, after we built that primary care base, into building up our specialty care services, and that's what that next block represents. And you can see Ohio County Family Care flows right in to Ohio County Specialty Care. We also wanted to make sure we represent our hospital service because we're there as a hospital to take care of your needs. But that blue block right there, that's, that's the most important block. That's our community. And by our community, I don't just mean the citizens of Ohio County, that's our patients. And we consider our patients not just the ones who choose to use our service, but also the people in our community who we have a responsibility to care for their health who we have a responsibility to educate on preventative screenings and other um, health-related matters. You'll notice that these blocks flow into each other. We want you to see the full continuum of care of what we can provide and why we're here for the community. So that is, our, that is the story of Ohio County Healthcare. As part, as my role as marketer, I get really excited, and I'm looking at Carla as I say this, I get very excited about the logo, the visual identity, the new colors. But at the heart of what our governing board wanted to do was we wanted to change the culture of Ohio County Healthcare. We needed to remind ourselves, our staff, and our community what we're about. We're OCH. We were Ohio County Hospital, presently we're Ohio County Healthcare, but our purpose and our vision, because a good vision tells you where you're going, is that at every time, every patient, every facility, we're gonna provide outstanding care here. Still OCH, but that is what we want to really 
impart to our community is we're here for you. We want to make sure that it, whenever you come into our doors, whenever you encounter with us, be it here today at the chamber, we're providing you outstanding care here in Ohio County. Now, I think our governing board, Carla, would say that's the biggest part of it is here in Ohio County. And all the growth that we're talking about today, that's possible because many of you in this room have chosen to stay here in Ohio County. We appreciate that. <coughs> so access to care. I have to get to my notes now. <clears throat> access to care talks a lot about the patients that we have. These are just some numbers. I'm not going to read them off to you. But it shows the number of patients that we treated within any of our facilities in um, last year, 2017. You'll see um, that the number one focus is to make sure that we have uh, an adequate number of medical staff, services, facilities to take care of these patients. Um, Judson Hunter, where is he today? Judson's back here. Judson is our HR coordinator, or manager, pardon me, and he also is our chamber president. He limited me to 15 slides today, even though I told him I have dialogue for about 40. But he limited me to about 15 slides, so I had to cut out the one that has all of our different locations. So I'm gonna have to summarize. We have 10 different locations through Ohio County Family Care, Ohio County Specialty Care. We have two rural healthcare clinics in Fordsville Area Medical Clinic and our Butler County Clinic. We employ about, or over now, 26 um, health care providers. On the, and you can also reference any of that information on the table today. It's all listed out, all of our different locations, and handy dandy phone numbers in case you need those services. And um, what's not listed on this slide is our uncompensated care. Uncompensated care is, goes to the mission of our hospital and that mission is that we're going to provide care regardless of anyone's ability to pay. Our job is to make sure we can care for the health of this community and that means those with means and those without. Each year we provide about two million dollars worth of uncompensated care, meaning people who may present to our ER who do not have health care insurance, people who may um, be on a lower income bracket and unable to um, pay their health care bills. Um, and that's a very important number to remember because if we weren't here, then those individuals would go without care. That $2 million represents the people who really don't have the ability to travel elsewhere. <coughs> it's very important when we talk about access to care to be able to tie that back in then to economic impact for our community. We need our 450 employees to provide care for our patients and for our community. They're a vital part uh, of our, our services. But that $17, $6 million worth of salary they represent, that's a vital part of the Ohio County community. I believe, Chase, did you tell me, Mr. Chase Benson, our Economic Development Director, are we the fourth largest employer? Yes, fourth largest employer in Ohio County. When we are looking at increasing services, we try very hard to tie that into um, economic efforts that are already in place within our community. I'm going to talk a little bit in, uh, about OCEDA, which is our Ohio County Economic Development Alliance, which our Judge Executive David Johnston was one um, on the forefront of bringing to Ohio County and establishing um, a board. So when we look at that $17.6 million in salary, we also need to remember there's other economic multipliers that go with that. For example, there's about another $3 million that we have in benefits we pay to our employees. That may be health care insurance, other um, insurance products that actually is provided locally here by Wes Roberts. Wes, I can't see you. Back there with Assured Partners. That may be our retirement accounts that we manage locally here with Jerry Mays with Pillar Financial Services. I always just say Jerry Mays, it's so odd to put a, a name to it. And they, they come into our hospital and they take care of our employees. But we are very, very strongly, we need to stay local with that. When our community chooses us, we need to be able to reach back out to our community and say we support you. We give annually around $350,000 in city and occupational tax. But it goes a little further than that. 
those economic multipliers continue. When you have 450 employees, that, according to the Kentucky Economic Development Cabinet, that supports about 270 other jobs in the community. It generates nearly 4.7 annually in purchases from local companies, just like we were talking about. I look in this room and I think of all the different people we have been able to, to come alongside and do business with. Voyage Technology, they're my go-to people. They helped us redesign our website and take care of us on a daily basis. Many of our First United's here, many of our banking friends are here who help us on a daily basis make sure that we can provide great services. If I didn't enlist your name, it's just because I'm not scanning fast enough because there's so many people in this room that are part of that purchases from local companies and who are really part of the success of who we are as a healthcare institute. Um, our employees spend about 5.6 million in local purchases. Now if you ask my husband, he would say I'm responsible for about a million of that, <laughs> especially in our local gift shop. But our employees' roles go beyond that. We are a servant leadership mentality at Ohio County Healthcare. It's very important to us from our CEO down that we give back. And as I was preparing this last night, I was thinking about all the different roles I know that Ohio County Healthcare employees serve in the community. I'm so lucky, I get paid to go out and be part of the community. But so many of our staff members willingly give up their time and their energy. They sit on um, city councils. They participate, Scott, in, on PTOs and on site-based councils. They coach soccer teams. They sit on their church committees. They are part of the fabric of who this, this community is. And when you need healthcare services, it's gonna be your neighbor taking care of you, not a number. It's gonna be someone you know, somebody you've set beside in church or seen in Walmart, and they're gonna be taking care of you with, with that care that we represent in our logo. One of the, um, the, the, one of the things that we love most about Ohio County Healthcare, or my role with Ohio County Healthcare, is that I do get to sit with OCEDA. OCEDA is our Ohio County Economic Development Alliance. And we really try to take our recruitment efforts and match those up with the goals that we have for economic growth for Ohio County. Um, OCEDA works very hard not only to attract industries, but also to make sure that we've got a strong workforce that can supply labor should we attract additional industries or for our existing industries. Some of that is education level. Chase, what are we looking for? We're at 19% for two-year education. Yeah, we're trying to get that up to 25%. 25%, and that, at that point will be a work <coughs> in progress. Yeah, eventually we need to get up to 32. So 32. So, while we're busy taking care of patients, you have a whole leadership team that's working with people like Chase and our judge and our fiscal court and with Scott Lewis in the schools and we're talking to him about what do you need in health care? What can we do to take and have volunteers come within our organization to help grow those two-year degrees so that we can continue to have strong economic development in Ohio County? Um, that's the reason I sit on the Orangeboro Community and Technical College Board. Um, we as a community gave some um, funds recently towards their new industry innovation center because we want to have um, more people return to Ohio County to um, make this their home. One thing that we do to try to nurture that is we have a program called Bring the Best Back Home. And so now we're going to have a little flash from the past right now. And um, we've had Bring the Best Back Home since, Kelsey, you'll have to tell me. When is that? Oh, man. I know, 2006? Yes. <laughs> um, so, and I think actually 2005 is when we started the program because you were a second year student with us. We have a program called Bring the Best Back Home. And that's where we take um, students who have left our volunteer program, gone into their college careers, about to start their college careers, and we find positions for them within the hospital where they can gain valuable healthcare skills, where they can mentor with our medical staff where they can have that hands-on experience before they go into their chosen field. And these are some great people. We've got Ms. Kelsey Johnson here on the corner. Well, that would be, I guess you're right. Yes, you're right. Kelsey has her own dental practice here in Ohio County. She opened last year. And we were so proud to see her come back to our community, choose this as her home. Um, in the back, we have Brian Taylor, a pharmacist. Brian has not 
does not practice medicine here in Ohio County, but man, has he given back to us with his beautiful book and sharing his testimony throughout our community. Front and center there is Samantha Mays. She is a physical therapist with our rehab department. She works very strong with all of our rehab services and especially our orthopedic um, service line. And over there far left, we have Dr. Bailey Phelps. Dr. Phelps was the very first Bring the Best Back Home student that we had. She actually helped us form the program. And Dr. Phelps is the kind of a story we like to see along with Kelsey's for what we want to work towards for Ohio County. She volunteered with us in high school, worked for us when she was in college and her undergraduate. She was a little busy in med school, so we didn't see her as much. I don't know what's up with that. And then once she finished med school, she immediately signed an agreement and returned to work. And now has opened a booming practice in part of our Ohio County Family Care Unit and lovingly, caringly, every day gets back to her community that she will very, very fondly tell you has nurtured her her whole life. So we want to make sure that as we have our, um, our employees and they're providing that access to care, they're also giving back to the community. So I'm gonna take that down to a little more specific level. We've got broad range what it means to recruit and how Ohio County Healthcare wants to partner up with all of um, the work of OCEDA and our economic development to make sure we have a strong economy. But I want to I want to take it down to just almost like our I want to do a specific examples with us today. And I don't and I saw them come in. They didn't even get a table. Um, back in 2014, back when we were looking, at, we wanted to increase our our primary care base. We were very very fortunate to be able to bring on Dr. Crystal Miranda, Dr. Gilbert Lucino. Young stand up. And you got your staff here with you today? I have their staff today. I see Shannon Smith's here and Lauren Atkins. Is Jill here? Yep, Jill's back there. Yes. She got a table, man. She scored. <laughs> um, so when we brought Dr. Miranda and Dr. Lacino on, we were able to establish in Beaverdam with Cynthia Wilson. We were able to enlarge rental space that we'd already gone out and helped to grow our economy by renting space there in Beaverdown. We, with, with the addition of Dr. Miranda and Dr. Lucino, we were able to treat approximately 7,500 additional patients a year. That's 7,500 people that didn't have to leave our community, that didn't drive to Owensboro Bowling Green and spend their money there at restaurants or spend their money there at gas stations. They stayed here in Ohio County and they got health care. Um, that economic impact of, of the addition of our primary care physicians created 10 new jobs. And I, would, I want to think the majority of the people in your all's office are from Ohio County. They're Ohio Countyans. So we appreciate that very much. When we had worked very hard and secured what we felt was a, a strong number of primary care physicians to care for our community, we were able to focus on our specialty staff. Um, I'm gonna make some introductions here today, if I can have them stand. We were very fortunate, and Dr. Hurley, you're gonna to have to help me think. 2016, we went full time. Was it two years prior to that? So right around the same time, we had Dr. Lucino and Dr. Miranda joining us. Dr. Philip Hurley, I can have you stand so everybody can give him a wave. <laughs> Dr. Philip Hurley, his associate, Dr. David Bowles, and Lori Brett Schneider joined us from Osmo. Osmo is a very um, tried and trusted name in the orthopedic, in orthopedic healthcare field. Um, they would clinic with us. They would come once or twice a week and do surgeries. Um, Dr. Hurley recognized quickly that Ohio County had a need for a full-time orthopedic service. And I think he liked us. Is that true? Yes. He wanted us to stick around. Dr. Hurley has a strong heart for Ohio County, and he opted to then, in 2016, start a full-time orthopedic service line in Ohio County. He was joined quickly by Ms. Jan Bickett. Jan, give him a wave. Jan's a nurse practitioner. And they, along with Dr. Bowles and Miss Brett Snyder, still provide very strong orthopedic services. Now, the commitment that Dr. Hurley made to us when he came full time was that he wanted us to be able to do total joint procedures in Ohio County. 
Now, Judge, prior to that, all of those people who had needed total joints, they may see us for their bumps and bruises. I think Seth Southern, you mentioned we treat through athletic program or athletic or athletic trainer through our sports medicine program. But we wanted the full line of orthopedic services here in our community. But in order to do that, we had to make some investments. We, um, Dr. Hurley joining us to do full, um, total joint procedures, um, created eight new jobs, but it also created capital investment. We had to spend around $150,000 in two th 2016 at the discretion of our governing board to enlarge our ORs. We needed new HVAC systems. We needed new equipment. I think we got about $76,000 in new equipment at that time. But it was so worth it because we were able to add the service line of like a joint camp. Jamie Evans, I'm not sure if she's still here, but there she is. Jamie and her team do a great job rehabbing those patients before they even have service or total joint procedures and making sure they understand what the surgery will entail and what the rehab after will take care of. Previously, we couldn't do that in this community. And now we're able to offer that service. And we just want to continue to grow service lines such as that. In addition, there's about 5,000 patients those four providers take care of a year. That's a lot of patients. And then, in that 2017, it was 306 surgeries. I think we're trending for more than that this year, Dr. Hurley. Yep, that's what we love. In addition to that, we were so fortunate this year to be able to bring back Dr. Robert Knox, our comeback kid. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Knox is an ear, nose, and throat specialist. You may be familiar with Dr. Knox. He um, actually was one of those affiliations we had a few years ago with Twin Lakes. I mean, he practiced in Litchfield. Upon retirement from um, that practice, he um, was able to join us here in Ohio County. He brought with him the wonderful Miss Regina Kane. Regina Kane is a nurse practitioner in ENT services. And between them, their office, just coming back this year, they created four new jobs. So those four new jobs, remember, that's say your economic multiplier. Those are the four people who are then spending their money here at Hometown IGA or at the local Walmart, or they're the ones who are buying cars from Don Moore, or David Moore, sorry. It's a good thing David's not here, he'd get me. And when Dr. Knox was here before, and you may correct me on this one, I'm thinking you saw about 800 patients a year. Yes, Dr. Knox is here part-time with us, and about 100 surgeries. So again, that's all people who do not have to leave our community for health care. Um, we also believe strongly in giving back to our community. You all give to us, and one of the best parts of my jobs is our community relations. How many people here have ever participated in Longest Day of Play? Great, I brought registration slips with me today because it's next month and I need more volunteers. Um, Longest Day of Play is an incredible outreach we have that promotes physical activity, promotes healthy eating, but to me the most impressive thing about Longest Day of Play is there are about 1,200 people who attend, families who come and play and laugh and enjoy our local um, park system, but there's over 250 volunteers that come out that day, and it's hot, and it's a lot of work, but they come out with joy in their heart, and it's a beautiful thing to see. We have Summer Sizzle. We could go on and on about the different um, events we do in the community. I think Shannon Coots with First United, I'm not sure this year there's been many community events I've not been at that she hasn't been standing right there by her side. But we, we put about 50000 a year, our budget for that, to put into <coughs> such events. One big thing we do is our local health coalition. Um, we gather together like-minded people in the healthcare industry. We gather together um, lots of different organizations and civic groups, and we talk about how can we improve the health of the community. When we make these revenues, we're a nonprofit facility. We don't have stakeholders. We don't pay dividends out to different people. What we do is we reinvest that back into our healthcare facility. We do that because then that provides more services for you and for this community. Um, in 2017, we had roughly $2.75 million worth of investments. And as you can see, we do a lot of medical equipment. A lot of that's in facilities upgrades. We have a hospital that was um, built in 1956. We have a lot of facility upgrades. We take that money and we use it to improve care for you. 
this doesn't touch upon our medical staff salaries that we use in our recruitment efforts. We do a lot of reinvestment of those funds to make sure that we're positioned to provide outstanding care here in this community for you. One very exciting thing I'd like to say is by the time we meet next year, that number is going to grow significantly. Um, our governing board has been kind enough to make a discretion that we're anticipating in the fall of 2018 that we're going to break ground on a new surgical center which will position right behind our hospital that Dr. Knox and Dr. Hurley can bring their patients to and give outstanding care and that's going to be about a 10 million dollar investment um, that we'll make in Ohio County. And that is all I have. I was getting the wrap-up sign from Judson so I had to hurry. <laughs> questions? No questions at all? Okay, I'm going to turn it back over to Judson Hunter. Thank you all so much, and thank you for loving the Hawkins Health Care. You're welcome. I saw the wrap-up. Please so. go like this. Okay, we um, <clears throat> have some official business we need to take care of real quick before we do that and I find the right slide um, we'll go ahead and do our door prize winners <coughs> Cece, how many two. we have two door prize winners uh, the first ticket six zero eight six three four six zero eight six three four It's got to be in here somewhere. <laughs> it's a gift certificate for the Hawk County um, Healthcare Gift Shop. We got some good stuff. You better find your ticket. Oh, <laughs> Jane, there Ms. Pick is going to want it. Okay. Uh, we have, are they back there? You have them? Um, <coughs> yes, they're here somewhere. I'll get you yours in a second. Our second winner, 608631. Uh, I'll find them for you. They're, we've talked them away somewhere. I'll bring it to you. Okay. Um, let me get this going. Hey, Judson. Yeah. You know, I always forget something. I just got one more thing. Okay. At this back table, we want everybody to take a water bottle with you. It's 90 degrees outside. Good health is good hydration. Drink lots of water. Be done with pop. Right. Okay, and then our business in the spotlight is Likens Printing. Uh, just type something up and uh, send it to Judy and we'll get it posted before any changes, okay? Okay, so we're approaching the time of year where we have our um, director stepping out and our new director stepping in. And so uh, this next part of the meeting, it'll be brief. We need to call the meeting to order. Um, strictly for us to introduce our new board of directors. Um, if you are a board of director, I'm going to ask you to please stand up if you're coming back uh, to serve next year. And that will be everyone who is on this list. <coughs> and then we have three new members, three directors coming in, and I'm going to introdu introduce those to you all. It's Travis Johnson, Sarah Stone, and Tiffany Webster. So these are our board of directors for next year. We have a few who couldn't be here today. So in order for us to uh, have these nominees, um, we need a motion to accept them for next year's board members. From a chamber member? No, we have a motion from Debbie in the back. And then I'll ask for a second. Second over here from CC Judy. And then lastly, we need a show of hands of all those in favor of our board of directors for next year. Anybody? Everybody votes on this. <laughs> Thank you all, you can be seated.
In our next meeting, we introduce uh, formally everyone, I believe. Right, Judy? Okay. <clears throat> a few announcements before we dismiss for today. Strawberry Festival is May 25th, 26th, and 27th in Beaverdam. The Farmer's Market for the Summer opens May 26th at the Beaverdam Park. June 9th is our Ohio County Chamber of Commerce Golf Scramble. Uh, Chase, do you have something real quick you want to share on that? or? Uh, just to let you all know, uh, we still have sponsorship opportunities available for $100 to get you a sign. Uh, you sponsor the hall. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Hopefully we'll have good weather. It's $160 per team uh, before June 1st. After June 1st, it's going to be $200 a team. June 9th. Hope to see you there. Thank you. CC beat me uh, to it. The longest day of play, June 21st. There are uh, registration forms in the back. <coughs> yeah, please pick one of those up. And then next month's meeting is June 19th, and this is again when we'll have the officers and director, directors installation. Are there any other announcements for today? All right, we'll go ahead and adjourn. Thank you all for coming out today. Be sure to pick up a bottle in the back. <laughs>